Hey everyone, this is DJ. Welcome to my channel. As more people have cut the cable cord and are using their fire stick to stream movies and TV shows, one thing that frustrates all of us is while watching a movie or your favorite TV show, it starts to buffer or the app shuts down right in the middle of it. In this tutorial, I will show you five ways that should help you solve those issues. So let's get right to it. All right, so let's start with tip number one. And this is an obvious one that most people overlook, and it's the, actually the most easiest fix. We all use our fire stick daily, and after we're done watching our movies or TV shows, all we do is just turn the TV off, and the fire stick goes to sleep mode. Like all electronics, like your PC, cell phone, tablets, it needs to be restarted every so often. By restarting it, it clears the RAM, frees up some space, and it starts fresh. So it's a good thing to do, Every so often, you can try doing that once a week, once every other week, at least, you know, depends on how much you use it. If you're not using it as much, maybe once a month, but it's recommended to restart it every so often. Now to do this, I recommend doing it through the software side, meaning going inside your settings, scroll down, go over to my Fire TV. We're gonna click on there and we're gonna scroll down where it says restart. Just click on restart and then click on restart again to confirm. And that's it. Now you can also unplug it from the outlet and it will restart the fire stick like that. If you do, just let it sit for like 15 seconds and then plug it back in. But I don't recommend doing this all the time, unplugging it all the time. All right, so let's go to tip number two. We'll go back out, scroll up and go under about. This has to do with your storage. As you can see here, it's showing me that I got 1.61 gigs left out of the 5.34. Now the Fire Stick and the Fire Stick 4K, they both come with eight gigs of storage. If you take away the OS and the pre-installed apps that they have, you're left with a little over five. Now the more we download apps, we try to find new content to launch or something different to try out something else. We kind of like forget about the old apps that we downloaded that we don't use as much. So if we go back out, on the main screen here in the settings, scroll over to applications. This is another place where you can see how much storage you have left. So we go, go down where it says manage install applications. And you can see it shows you over there the available space that you have. Now there's a couple of ways you can free up some space. If we click on manage install applications. The best one is to uninstall apps that you don't use. That way you're getting rid of apps that you're not using, it's not taking up the space, free up more space. And also if your apps that you have in here is must have and you're still under a gig, because if you see that you're under a gig, like let's say you got 500, 600 megs left, you will notice that your apps take longer to run you could be in an app watching something and it will start buffering or it will actually just shut down right in the middle of it. That's a sign that you don't have enough room. It's trying to write something in your memory or in your storage and it doesn't find enough room. One way is like I said, to uninstall the app. Another way is to clear the cache. Now on the side here in the bottom right, you will see what says cache and this one's only four kilobytes. But if you go through the list, you will notice some of them are in the megabytes, like this one. So you can come here, scroll down, and clear cache. And you can do that for a lot of them, especially the ones that are in the megabytes, like I said. It does take a little longer to clear every single one of them, but that will free up some space. I can see a screensaver, 57 megabytes over here. Clear cache. And then you will notice once you do all these. Now, the longer you use your apps, the more the cache will fill up. That's why it's good to check it every so often, especially the ones that you use more frequently. So that way, as long as you're over a gig, 
your device will run a little smoother. The more space you have, the better it will run. So keep that in mind. All right, let's move on to. T let's go back home. All right, tip number three it has to do with your apps that are running in the background. Now, you know, you use an app, you close it, you exit it, and you assume that it's not running anymore in the background. But that's not always the case. Some of them are still running in the background, and some of them auto automatically start when you, first, when you first boot up your Fire Stick. So if you restart your Fire Stick, some of them have a setting where it says auto start on boot up, and it will be running in the background. Now, one way to shut down apps that are running in the background, it was going back into the settings, other applications, and force stop every single one of them. Another way that's easier, it's an app called Background App and Process List. You can get this from the App Store. So if you go up to the search box over here, all you need to do is start typing some letters. So we're gonna do background. As you can see, I already found it on the bottom. It has a result. Just click on it and it will find it right there. Just install it, and then when you launch it, it shows you that you got what apps you have it running in the background. Now, most of mine are closed. I do this more often, so that's why it's only fine too. Now, to close them down, it's pretty simple. As you can see on the top left, I go on to close all apps, just click on it. Now, this brings you right into manage applications, but the best part of this is you click on force close and all you have to do is press back and it brings it to the next one and then you just click on force close so it's not like going down a list it just goes to the ones that are running and then you just close force stop from there that's it all right let's go back home all right tip number four this has to do with some adjustments in your settings of your amazon fire tv settings so if we go over there and we start over display and sounds. We're going to click on there first. First thing I like to disable is the screensaver. As you saw earlier, when we went out there to clear cache, the screensaver was at 57 megs and change. Now, the longer this runs, the higher that number will go. And especially if you're running low in space, if you only had a gig, let's say, if this reaches up to 300, you will be down to 700 for no reason. So I just click on here, scroll down where it says start time, click on it, and just select never. Though this is a personal preference, but it's recommended, especially if you're running low on space. Okay, let's go back out. We're gonna go to applications. If you go under app store, the automatic updates, I can turn this off. This is running in the background, keeps on checking to make sure all your apps are up to date. This is another service that runs in the background. I disable that, that will speed up your Fire Stick. Go back out, Amazon Photos. If you're not using this service, I will have this disabled, both of them. One less thing to be running in the background. Game Circle, that's for the gamers. If you're using your Fire Stick for games and you wanna track your progress on the cloud, you can have this on. Otherwise, just disable it. Let me go back out. We're gonna scroll over to preferences. Now in here, the first thing I turn off, and this is as a privacy thing, more than just running the background. All these are on by default, and it collects information about what you're using, which apps, how long, and all that stuff that they're doing, and I don't like that. And also it's running the background because it has to send the information back and forth. So you just click on it and just turn off. And I do that for all three. That's it. This one by default is off, data monitoring. Now if you turn this on, <clears throat> you will notice in here it says video quality. Now for those of you that have a slow connection and uh, or let's say you're reaching your data cap, you can click on here and change it from best to good and that will lower the data that it's getting, like the, um, the quality of the stream. So you're gonna be using a little less data. So if you have a slow connection, this will help you with buffering. Or if you're reaching your data cap, you will limit the data that you're using and it will help you a little bit there. But it will take away from the quality. 
just keep that in mind. If you don't have that problem, just turn that off. Notification settings. Now this is the same thing with the apps. Now, if you turn this on, this won't show you those little pop-ups that there is a app update or this app found this. Uh, depends on certain apps that you have. You may get um, some notifications from them. You can turn that off to turn it off, those notifications. Or you can just go up under app notifications here, click on that, and you can disable each one of them individually. Let's go back out. Feature content. That's for the videos that you see, um, the advertisement in the main screen, for example, where it shows you new TV shows or movies. So when you land on it, it will automatically start playing and you can hear the audio. You can disable that. You don't need those running. It does come in helpful when you're under Prime Video, for example, and you go over a show or a movie and it plays like a little trailer, but it's also something that takes away from your resources. Next thing, this is sync recent content. I personally don't use that, but some people may find this useful. What this does is if you're watching Prime Video and let's say in the living room and you decided to go into the bedroom, as long as you have two or three more fire sticks and you have this on, you can transfer that information to the other ones so you can continue watching from where you stopped. If you don't use that, just turn it off. And for a bonus, this is going to come over here, My Fire TV, because in here you really don't have anything else to adjust. But I'm going to show you the developer options. If you come in here, if you go down where it says apps from unknown sources and turn it on, this is pretty much what we all call jailbreak. All it is, it's a setting, you enable it, and it allows you to sideload side apps from unknown sources, meaning you can download apps from a browser, um, different apps that allow you to download other apps like uh, Laptoid or APK Pure. So pretty much this is all it is, uh, just a setting, and now you jailbroke your Fire Stick. All right. All right, tip number five and final tip. It's about your internet connection. Now, this could be a few different reasons why it may affect your streaming, and I will cover the main reasons for now. The first reason could be your actual internet speed that you subscribe to. For example, if you only subscribe to 10 to 25 megabits and you have to share that connection with more people in your household and they're streaming too and playing video games, and don't forget your computer, your cell phone, your tablets, and any other device like uh, security cameras or smart light bulbs and all that, all this is using bandwidth and that's not gonna be enough to share. If you're subscribing to a higher speed, 50, 100, 300 or more, to make sure that your connection is pretty good, there's an app called Analyti. Now you can get this at the App Store. So if you go up in the search box, in here just type in speed test. And you only need to type in a few letters. As you can see, it's right there in the results. Just click on it and it'll be the first one. Now you don't have to use Analyti, you can use any other app that you want. You can even use the internet browser that's the Fire Stick and go to fast.com. And that way you run a speed test and you get an idea of what your speed to your Fire Stick is. So if we launch it, automatically we'll start doing a speed test. Now I will recommend running this two or three times. This way, once you run it two or three times, you will get an average of speed so right now it says I'm getting 266 down and about 36, 37, let's say, upload. At the same time, it's giving you some results on the bottom, like what's your Wi-Fi strength and what's the quality and what you can use. Now, it depends on the results. <clears throat> As I said, and right now it shows 266. If you're subscribing to, let's say, a gigabyte and that's all you're getting, Chances are you're too far from your router. Otherwise, if you're about the average, then you get an idea of the, what stream you can use. Now, another thing that will make a difference to your connection, so we go back home, and we scroll over to settings, go down to network. It will have to do with which network you're connected to. 
usually we got two networks in here the 5 gigahertz and the 2.4 as you can see the 5 gigahertz it says it's good if you go to netgear 18 which is my 2.4 it says it's very good now a lot of people select the 2.4 just because of that reason they say signal strain is very good so i'm going to pick that one but you have to keep in mind that the 2.4 even though it has a longer range it transmits data at a slower speed on the other hand, the 5 gigahertz, it does have a shorter range, but it does transmit data at a faster, faster speed. So it will be recommended using the 5 gigahertz. Also, another thing that I would recommend is getting an adapter to use an Ethernet cable. If you went to Amazon, for example, you can get an Amazon Ethernet adapter that works for the Fire TV Stick, 2nd Gen, and the 4K, and the Cube and also the third generation, the pennant design, and it's $15. If you do have the ability to run an Ethernet cable, I would recommend using an Ethernet connection, then using the Wi-Fi. Even if it's right next to the router, you're still competing for the signal and the bandwidth, where if you're using an Ethernet cable, you get a steady speed. The connection is always going to be steady. It's a lot better than Wi-Fi. There's also other options if you don't have the ability to run an Ethernet cable. One other thing that's just a little more expensive are MoCo adapters. As you can see, they're $169 for two, and you do need two of them. These ones use your existing coaxial cable that's in your house from your cable. And by using one of these, uh, the speed will be almost like having the connection even if it's at the other end of the house, the speed will be con like being connected to the router right next to it. So this is an option. There's also other different things. You can get a, a wireless access point to bring the signal closer. I don't personally recommend the power line adapters. They use your electricity to transfer the signal. If those are not on the same circuit, they're not going to transfer the signal as good. Just keep that in mind before you purchase one. Since they're pretty cheap, you can probably pick one up for $30. Now, another thing you can do is if you live in an apartment building, I would recommend changing your channel of your Wi-Fi. So if you go into your, wire, uh, your router and log into the browser into the settings, if you go onto wireless, you will notice there's a place in there that you can change the channel for each wireless network. So we go in here. As you can see right here, I'm on channel 6. And on the 5 gigahertz, I'm using channel 48. For the 2.4, there's three channels that don't overlap each other. And that's channel 1, 6, and 11. You can pick either one of them. That will be your best choices. Most of the people don't touch this. And it will be automatically in auto. By changing it, you will change the frequency that everybody else is using. And that way you create less interference. All right, let's go back home. And that will be it. That will do it for tip number five. Now, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section below. And I will try to answer everybody's question as soon as possible. If you like my video, give me a thumbs up. Let YouTube know that you like what I do here. Click on subscribe and also click on the little bell icon to get notified of any new videos I upload. Thanks for watching. This is DJ. Till next time.